Remember this? Oh, it's a long time since I've swum from any rafters, I'll tell you. But if you back Bobby Joe in the 1999 Grand National, you'll never forget the image of Paul Carberry swinging from those old winner's enclosure rafters in jubilation. That period and the years that followed were a golden era for Ireland in the Grand National. Besides Bobby Joe, we had Papillon, we had number six Valverde, we had Monty's Pass, we had Hedgehunter, all sorts of Irish winners. But since Silver Birch won for Gordon Elliott back in 2005, it's gone quiet. But undaunted, the Irish are back again with a very, very strong hand this time around. We have, for Gordon Elliott, Chicago Gray, laid away with this race in mind. A big time Cheltenham winner last year. He comes with a major chance. We also have loads of other horses you could make a case for. Seabass has never stopped improving this season. Treacle is ultra progressive. Organized Confusion is an Irish Grand National winner. We've also got potentially Black Appalachie. We've got Rare Bob. We've got On His Own, the Thyestes Chase winner. We've got so many horses, including Killy Glen, you could make a case for. The question is, which are the strongest members of this Irish contingent this time around? Yeah, not an easy uh, question to answer that either as well. By the way, that's a bar now uh, where uh, Paul Calvary was uh, celebrating. Uh, once upon a time, you wouldn't have put it past him to, to get himself a, a pint there as well. But that's a bar now, folks. But that was a, a famous celebratory moment. The Irish challenge, though, Steve, I know you've got your eye on a one that might be slightly off radar. I, I like the chance of organised confusion, which we'll talk about probably uh, uh, later on, but I think he's the ideal type for the race. He's only ever run over more than two mile five once. That was in the, well, the uh, Irish National last year, uh, where he won in tremendous style going away, and I think he's been kept away from marathon distances since. He's unexposed, is what mm. I'm saying. Killy Glenn was going well when he fell for last, uh, was it four out last year? Uh, he must be, and he's been in good form again this season. He must be a player, because I couldn't see see Bass's unknown but clearly progressive. I know you like Chicago Grey. Um, I've got my doubts about him myself about jumping round, but, yeah. but nonetheless, it's a really strong field this year, a strong hand the Irish have got. Yeah, we'll talk about Chicago Grey, uh, John. Uh, my reservations about him are that those sort of exaggerated hold-up tactics, which have worked so well through on the parks courses, um, might not work at entry for every sort of Amberley House and Rough Quest. There's a dozen flops, really. So that, I definitely have that reservation. But here we see him a couple of years ago winning the four miler at Cheltenham. Also, what sticks in my mind is when he went to the Scottish National yeah. on the back of this, he was pretty much tailed off after four fences that day. Yeah, I think the exaggerated tactics these days at entry, I think they, were, they could work up to about eight or ten years ago. I think mm. with the faster sort of style of running the race these days, I'm not too sure if that'll help someone with his tactics. Uh, as you say, he flopped in the uh, Scottish Grand National just after a couple of weeks after that. Um, in the cold light of day, I'm not too sure how good his form actually is. And I think he'll have his supporters in the day, but I don't even think he's a pick of the Irish. Well, he, he beat Besha by this day, Steve, who went on to win that Scottish National. It, it did. My, my worry is that since then, I mean, this day, the brilliant ride as we were on the inside the whole way, it was a superb ride. I think mistakes have crept into his game. I, again, he's another horse. I know we've said this about lots. I think very, very early on is vital for him. He has to get into a rhythm jumping-wise. I've seen him jump not as well since. And he's a sort of horse, if he took, you know, if he met the first wrong, I think could take against it. If he does, you know, he's clearly stamina is absolutely no issue. And if, he, if things go right for him, I can see the argument. But I think given his, his place in the market, I've got, I've got enough reservations to put me off, I think. Yeah, I think that's, that's fair enough. I, I do hold those myself. That's Chicago Grey. Uh, we've got Seabass, of course. He, he's potentially one of the leading contenders. Should Willie Mullins not attract Ruby Walsh? We'll have decisions on that in the days, John. I think Seabass. I think Ruby Walsh will ride the horse. I'd be amazed if he doesn't. Uh, Seabass, he looks the sort of horse who's got the ideal blend now of speed and stamina. I think he looks he, he'll improve for this sort of step up and trip as well. And I know people are worried about the, the horse fact that he's been winning on soft ground in Ireland, but I think the good ground, likely good ground next week, will help his stamina. And being a son of Turtle Island, his stock actually did quite well on good ground on, on, over the jumps as well. So I think Steve Bass for the whole load of wins next to his name and Ruby Walsh, he'll be a, he'll be a single figure price on the day. He's the hunt ball of Ireland, isn't he, Steve? Was it £56 <coughs> yeah. he's improved in, in winning five times? That's, that's, I mean, right, absolutely. And 
you know, Ted Walsh had as a grand national winner, so he knows, uh, um, you know, what the sort of standard you need. He's just going the right way, isn't he? The stamina is the one unknown. I agree that he, he promises to stay. You don't ever know until they do, but he doesn't give the impression that he's uh, he's all about speed. I think I think he'll probably be okay. So that is that is the one issue, I guess. The last half mile slight might slightly worry you, but that aside, he's just going the right way, and he looks a very sound jumper. So in, but 12, 14 races, including points. I think three chases, or well, three yeah. points and 12 chases, he's fallen once. And that was at the last, when clear, he jumped around that table. So he is basically a very sound jumper. Yeah, he's won each of his last seven, five out of five this season as well. That is Seabass. And should Ruby Walsh ride him, as John O'Connell suspects he will, you suspect the punters will latch onto it. And it could be hook, line and sinker for the bookies with Seabass.